Okay, this is a short introduction to the conductivity meter. Your conductivity meter is going to look something like this. It basically has two components, a probe and a control box. And if we turn it on, we can see that it immediately measures the conductivity between the two sides of the probe. That's given usually in the units of Siemens, but you have to make sure that your units are set right because it'll alternatively convert that into milligrams per liter, per liter depending on your circumstance. The unit Siemens is named after the German uh, industrialist from the 19th century. So, as you might imagine, it gets a capital S, unlike seconds, which gets a small s. The other thing to note, then, is that it's usually going to be Siemens per centimetre. So this is what your probe looks like, and it's basically composed of two plates that are coated in platinum, and it measures the conductivity between those two opposing plates. So now, as with any instrument, the first thing that we have to do is calibrate it. If we want to calibrate it, we're going to take it out of the water and dry it off. Those plates, we'll come back to look at them later, are quite fragile, so never put any tissue inside the instrument and simply pat it dry. And once you have it dry, then you can put it into your calibrating solution and begin the calibration procedure. You don't have to memorize it because it'll be, as you can see there, written out on the desk beside you. But let's do it now. So put the beaker in the middle of the hot plate and then drop the probe down in, making sure that it's at least a centimetre off the bottom, and you'll see why that's important in a minute. Turn on the stirring. Oh yeah, I didn't mention I put in a stirring bar. We'll come back to that as well. We're going to push the calibrate button and wait for it to come to equilibrium. I've obviously left this a while already because it's already at equilibrium, but equilibrium is indicated by the small icon that I'm highlighting now. Once that's set, you may want to leave it a little bit longer to make sure that nothing else is going to happen. What you can do is push the store or return button and that will immediately calibrate the cell to the known value for that calibration solution. And that calibration solution has a conductivity of 1413 microsiemens per centimeter. Alright, so back to our stirrer hot plate. The small white thing there is a stirrer bar, and it's basically a Teflon coated magnet. Maybe you've seen these before, maybe you haven't. If you haven't, well, let's see what happens. If you're going to use the stirrer hot plate, it's important to make sure that your beaker is in the middle, otherwise it'll rattle off the side. So just move it so it's in the middle, and you won't get that annoying sound. It's also important, as you can see here, to make sure that your stirrer bar is below the probe. So there it is spinning underneath, it's not going to cause any harm. But if it's spinning and it's banging off the probe, you won't get a stable reading and you might damage the probe. So just be a little bit careful and you can look from the side, edge on, move your head down and look in the side of the flask to make sure that it's set up right. It's almost impossible to tell from the top. The other thing then is not to turn up stirring too fast. If you turn up stirring too fast and it's quite sensitive, what you'll see is that a vortex forms in the water. And if a vortex forms in the water, it's going to pull air inside the conductivity probe and you're going to get readings that aren't quite, ac quite accurate. Okay, and then don't forget to turn it off when you're done because you can't tell it's running unless there's a magnet on it. And if you bring a magnet to it and it's already running, your solution will splash before you get it into the center. All right, so we have our calibrated machine. What now? Okay, let's take a reading. So to take a reading, Make sure the probe is clean and dry, dry the outside of it, remember, take care, never put anything inside the probe. And then take a beaker and fill it with the solution that you want to measure the conductivity of. Put that into the centre, make sure it's got a stirrer bar in it. And then, when it's sitting in the centre, carefully drop the probe down so that it's about one and a half, one centimetres off the bottom of the flask. Wait for it to come to equilibrium, turn the stirring on, wait for it to come to equilibrium, and then you get your reading, and it looks like this. And what you have to notice here is that the prefix has changed. So it was in microsiemens per centimeter, and now it's in millisiemens. And if we change it back, it can go to microsiemens if we measure another solution. So that'll change as you take different readings, and you have to be careful to observe that, because that's a thousand-fold difference. Okay, very last thing then, let's have a closer look at that probe. The probe has two plates coated in platinum of known size and known distance away from each other, and so it measures the conductivity between these. But if you look at them, you'll see that there's a hole at the top of the glass form. So at the top of the glass there's a hole which allows the air to come out as you fill it up with solution. You can also use this then to rinse out the inside. So if you gently spray water in here, it'll flush out any solution that's inside the probe. And so what that means is you don't have to lift the probe out or you don't have to spray in the bottom of the probe. Just gently flush some water in there. And it also means that as you fill up the probe, the air can escape and you get a uniform solution from one side to the other. You should always, just in case, check for air bubbles. Alright, that's all for now. If you have any questions, ask in the lab or post them below or post them on Moodle. I hope that was helpful. Bye!